is the message to Ephesus. So John is in meditation, really important point. He receives all of this in the spirit, i.e. in deep meditation. Therefore, it's all happening within his mind. The Christ appearing to him, like he might appear in a dream, the real Christ, and gives him this information. Is. So chapters two and three are about letters. So letters are modern, first of all, okay? They're information. If I send you a letter, I'm sending you information. And as we'll see later, in the next cycle, it becomes a scroll. So the scroll is more related to the past. So we could say the letters are dealing with the present, the present situation within John, which is a metaphor for the present situation within us letters that John is supposed to write to the churches. And as we know, the churches are actually the um, chakra on the endocrine system. Okay, I'll be using the chakra system just because I know that better than the endocrine system. So it's a message to himself. It's a message to the body, if you like. Now notice that chapter two deals with the first four chakras because that's to do with the earthly body. There, there are material world chakras, if you like. The heart is a bit of a bridge. And then these three chakras, the throat, the brow, and the crown, they're the heavenly chakras in the symbology that you, is used in Revelation. So that's important to know. So the two and the three, which completes the whole chakra system, the, all of the letters, are done in chapter two and three. That makes five. In numerology, five is the number of God created man. Okay, so that's the first important part of the symbology there. So let's read. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. Remember, the lampstands are holders of light and the spiritual energy that moves between them and around this chakra system that runs the whole body. Okay, So it's saying this is a message to that system. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance. I know you cannot tolerate evildoers. You have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them to be false. So already, and you'll see as the metaphors continue through the book, this is already stating that there are thoughts within us that are deceivers that claim to be something that they are not, claim to be messages, spiritual messages from the apostles, but they are not. And because the root chakra holds the energy and the information of all of the other chakras, as you will see on that chakra video that I've done, it's really important that the foundation, that the root chakra is cleansed, is pure, is sending, is able to decipher the correct messages from spirit rather than the ego or devil if you like and is able to determine which messages should be sent throughout the body. I also know that you are enduring patiently and bearing up for the sake of my name and that you have not grown weary but I have this against you. Now you'll see this pattern in the letters. This information it tells you where you are, but where it says I have something against you, it's giving advice on what needs now to happen within these, these energy areas, okay? So, 
but I have this against you. You have abandoned the love that you had at first. Remember them from what you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. And then it says, if not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Now remember, repent is correction. So if our base chakra is out of alignment, the whole house crumbles. Same as if you built a house and the foundations are not built correctly, eventually the house is going to fall. Um, it then says, yet this is to your credit. You hate the works of the Nicolaitans. Now the Nicolaitans are in the Bible and they fell um, foul and went towards lasciviousness, which is actually sexual lust and desire. So you could think about what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, but it's saying that this area hasn't fallen foul to that. Um, let anyone who has an ear to listen. Now that's a really important phrase and you hear that continuously through the Bible. You can hear this video, you can hear my words, but will you listen? Will you do something with it? Will you take it in? There's a big difference between hearing and listening. So that phrase is repeated often. Let anyone who has an ear to listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches, to the chakra energy system. To everyone who conquers, I will give permission to eat from the tree of life that is in the paradise of God. So the tree of life is what nourishes us. It's what, it's God's will if you like. If you remember the chakra picture that God's will, God's energy, God's nourishment, life force flows through the chakras and we breathe them around, but they come from God. So if you haven't got your chakra energy system um, sorted and in alignment and in place, you can actually cut yourself off from all of the abundance, the law of attraction, the law of supply, the law of healing. So that's what this letter is really talking about. It's giving messages to that root foundation. Okay, and then we move to the message to Smyrna. Now Smyrna is the sacral um, chakra just below the navel in your um, lower tummy if you like and to the angel of the church in Smyrna write these are the words of the first and the last who was dead and came to life so again it's the spiritual energy that's coming through that wants to tell the sacral energy um, what the Christ consciousness how it assesses it and what it needs to do. So, I know your affliction and your poverty, even though you are rich. Now, this is the area of sustenance and creativity. So, what that's really saying is, and, I, and as I say, I can relate this to my life because the first 40 years of my life, I was programmed by my mother to have poverty consciousness. I believed I was poor, even though actually I was rich. But I was living, oh, there's not enough money, I can't afford this and I can't afford that. When actually, when you look at it objectively, I also had holidays, all my bills were paid and everything. Um, so, and also on the level of creativity, um, Lots of us shut down our creativity. What, you know, what we used to love as kids, what we used to do as kids, you know, we lose that as we get older. And, you know, when I say to some people who are, have certain issues, I say, okay, where's your creativity in life? What are you passionate about? Often they'll just tell me that they just work and go home and watch the TV. So the creativity is there, the energy flow is there, but whether we use it or not is a different... Um, matter and if we recognize it's there is a different matter so i know your affliction and your poverty even though you're rich i know the slander on the part of those who say they are jews chosen people and are not but are a synagogue of satan so again this is referring to the thoughts that you think are real that present themselves to be good for you that are actually what I call an ego trick, okay, a lie, a deception. You know, why, when we're trying to lose weight, 
you know, that cake seems really good, doesn't it? Oh, I really want that. Yeah, that cake is really going to nourish me. That'll make me happy after my horrible day. But it's a trick, isn't it? Because that short-term gain, then you've got weeks and weeks of guilt to suffer and the diet's ruined and you have to start again. So it's referring to these kinds of ego tricks. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Now, again, you know, the whole of Revelation is warning us that things are going to change. We're going to have to face what's within us and all of this if we want to reach enlightenment. Beware the devil is about to throw some of you into prison so that you may be tested, not held, tested. And for 10 days you will have afflictions. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. I.e., despite what it looks like is happening in your life, stupid example, but if I don't eat that cake, then I'm not going to suffer that pain and that guilt and that death and belief in the physical body and that I'm powerless and all of those things. If I can just have endurance, patience, and I'm tested and I pass the test and I don't eat that cake, I'm not tempted, I don't fall to deceit, then actually, you know, I'm going to be eventually enlightened, I'm going to return to the Christ consciousness and become eternal. So, you will be given the crown of eternal life, we could say. Let anyone who has an ear to listen, remember, it's not just hearing it, you've got to do something about it. Let anyone who has an ear to listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches, whoever conquers will not be harmed by the second death. And the second death is mentioned later in the book, so we won't kind of get into that now. So, it's talking about your creativity, your sustenance, your beliefs about yourself and not falling prey to the lies and the tricks of the ego. So just to again, just go over a little bit um, about the sacral energy area. Um, it's to do with the sex organs, obviously what's here physically, the bladder, the bowel, the lower intestines. But this area is about your emotions, your relationship, creativity, because it's often linked to the throat chakra as well, which is about your creativity. Um, and as I say, it's in the symbology of the four living creatures to come, so just to keep repeating this so it goes in if you like, this is the area of the face of man. This is about the physical personality, if you like, the physicality, sustenance. You know, you have to eat to live, those kinds of things, and what you need to live. Um, it's also linked to water, and obviously 80% of our bodies are water. Water is also represents spiritually emotions, and it also represents the underlying spiritual knowledge. So, you know, you can meditate on those things for yourself. And to the angel of the church in Pergamon, right, these are the words of him who has the sharp two-edged sword. So we could say that in different language. To the energy or spirit that serves God in the solar plexus, these are the words of him who has overcome his own will. Now, again, I'll do a little bit on um, what will is as opposed to mind a little bit later. But again, the sword of judgment, remember the two-edged of, sword of judgment in the Christ consciousness is about judging perception, negative and positive um, stories that you're telling yourself. Now, the solar plexus is a very, very powerful chakra as we're here. I know where you are living, where Satan's throne is. So the solar plexus, the yellow, it's related to the color yellow and it's here just below, if you like, the bra line. And it's called the seat of Satan in this book. Now, Satan, the devil, uh, I call that the ego. So the little devil in your mind that, you know, wants to tell you the wrong thing to do, the deceiver, the tempter, the thing that believes that you are this personality and, and nothing else. So this is, this solar plexus is a very important place because this is where Satan sits. This is where his power is, 
his throne to rule is. And just a quick um, word on the um, colours as well of the chakra energy systems. The red is related to the root. Orange is the sacral. Then we come up to the solar plexus that is yellow. Well, if you add the red and the yellow, you come to the orange. It's a triad, a powerful triad. The orange, the, uh, sorry, the yellow, the red makes the orange. So it's showing the interrelationship between these three chakras, particularly these base chakras, these earthly chakras, and that's important to understand as well in how the energy works. So this is ruling, if you like. The solar plexus is ruling. The devil's in charge of your material world, your material energy. So, I know where you're living, where Satan's throne is, yet you are holding fast to my name, and you did not deny your faith in me, even in the days of Antipas, that's a martyr. Antipas, my witness, a martyr's sacrifices. So this area has made sacrifices for God, if you like. My faithful one, who was killed among you where Satan lives. And again, that killed among you. So in the days of tribulation, as you'll see, those areas seem very quiet, like they've shut down, like nothing is happening there, no spirituality whatsoever. But they're shut down temporarily for protection. And this is what this is alluding to. So as I say, as we go round and round, the three times we go round this through the book of Revelation, it's given in different symbology, but it's actually telling the same story. So, um... But I have a few things against you. So here's the warnings. You have some there who hold to the teaching of Balaam and who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the people of Israel. So they would eat food, sacrifice to idols and practice fornication. So what those few lines are talking about is um, you are being tempted. So Balaam taught Balak. So you, the devil, if you like, the ego has taught you to eat food, sacrifice to idols, i.e. eat the wrong thing, think the wrong thing, crave the wrong thing, have a passion for the wrong thing. Um, and the people of Israel are the chosen people. So, and that represents your spirituality. So it's almost talking about the head-heart battle, isn't it? You know, where your head says, have the cake, have the cake, it's really good for you, oh, it'd be lovely. And then you hear that spirit voice within you, it goes, don't do it. You, you know, you're going to feel guilty, you're going to hate yourself again, you're going to, you know, have weeks of suffering now. But which one do we listen to? And just a little word on practicing fornication, the sexual energy is so powerful, okay? It reproduces, doesn't it? So there's continuous warnings about that sexual energy being used in the wrong way. And if you think about our society now that is obsessed with sex and sexuality and all the, the boundaries are being blurred, the use of energy in perhaps different ways rather than the single use for which it was created can be a powerful drain and take the uh, chakras and the energy and the thoughts and everything out of alignment. So you have some who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans, so again those who fell into lasciviousness. Repent then, correct, if not, I will come to you soon and make war against them with the sword of my mouth. You're going to be judged. What you do, what you think, is going to be judged for your own good. So you can make the right decision. In The Course of Miracles, it talks about choose again. It talks about right-mindedness as opposed to wrong-mindedness. Um, so, and again, that's forgiveness, isn't it? Repentance. It doesn't matter if you have sinned, if you've done the wrong thing, you've made the wrong choice. You can always correct, repent, forgive, and make the right choice. It's because we're so loved. We can always, everything can be corrected. Let anyone who has an ear listen, listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, I will give some hidden manna. Now, if you think about the Bible, hidden manna, 
was food that was given to um, the people in the desert when they had nothing. It came from God. So it's nourishment from God. I will give you my spiritual flow. And I will give a white stone. Something written in stone is forever. It's permanent. Okay. I will give a white stone. And the white is pure, obviously, and cleansed. And on the white stone is written a new name that no one knows except the one who receives it. Now, this is really interesting because what I found was, again, autobiographical. When I came to a point where I realized that Teresa isn't a real person, isn't a thing, it's a personality, it's a group of beliefs and values and, and behaviors, um, I really felt I'd come to a point where I needed to make a differentiation between who I was before and who I was now. And so I, you know, I used to put on the bottom of my emails, I Aseref. I just changed my my letters around. It was just, it was just a something for me. Um, and lots of the um, the yogis and the Buddhas do, um, sorry, the yogis and the monks and things like that, when they come to a certain point of development, they're given a new name. So this is a really important um, demarcation between an old physical self, the ego self, which is a pseudo self, and the real self. And there isn't really a name for the real self because you become part of the Christ consciousness. You're no longer an individual person. You become an ind a holographic part of the whole. So that's the message to Pergamon. In Edgar Cayce's um, interpretation of the letters, he interprets the one of the living creatures, the lion to the solar plexus. A lion, because here as well, the, you know, it, this solar plexus is related to the adrenals. Think about adrenaline. Is that when you go into fear, those things are released. So this is almost your fear center as well. And what does the lion have? It has courage, courage to overcome it. It's the king of the jungle. It's a predator. So this is a it's saying that this is a powerful, powerful place. Um, it's related to the earth energy of fire. Transformation. Fire is about transformation. Out of the ashes comes the phoenix. Okay, so it's also to do with self-preservation. And what wants to preserve itself more than anything? The ego that believes it's a body. So this whole seat of Satan, the solar plexus, is really a powerful place that we need to make sure we're in alignment with. Also, the message to Pergamon is a warning about the misuse and or negative use of will, your self-will, your choosing, acknowledging opposing wills and sources within this region where the ego wrestles spirit for control of the powerful sexual energy, lust, desires, self-gratification. Defeating the ego leads to new levels of consciousness of your God's will being connected to your will and that being a focused choice. So I hope all that's clear. It will become clear as we go through because obviously we're going around cycles and cycles of this. But let's now move to the message of Thyatira, the heart chakra. The message to Thyatira. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira, write, these are the words of the Son of God, who has eyes like flame of fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. So again, alluding back to that vision of Christ um, and the flame of fire, the eyes of flame of fire is perception, transformed perception and the feet like burnished bronze are transformed understanding. So it's talking to, to the heart about transformation of understanding and perception. And the heart is a bridge, as you'll see later, a gateway between the three heavenly chakras and the three earthly chakras. I know your works, your love, your faith, your service and your patient endurance. I know that your last works are greater than the first. 
the heart is transforming. It's better than it was. It's doing well. But I have this against you. You tolerate the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet and is teaching and beguiling my servants to practice fornication and eat the food sacrificed to idols. Again, Jezebel was an immoral woman who deceives people to get what she wants. She's the temptress. And she tempted people to worship pagan symbols. And paganism is against Christianity, if you like. So it's the temptress. Again, you know, tempting you into lust and passion and self-gratification and all of these things that are not actually good for us. They're the wants of the ego, the wants of the physical body. I gave her time to repent, to correct, but she refuses to repent of her fornication. Beware, I am throwing her on a bed, and those who commit adultery with her, those who get into bed with her, I am throwing into the great distress, unless they repent of her doings, and I will strike her children dead. Children are effects. They come from parents. Parents cause children are effects. So not only is it going to um, come and make you uh, face all of those things, but you're going to have to face the consequences of your actions too, cause and effect. All the churches will know that I am the one who searches minds and hearts, and I will give to each of you the, as your works deserve, i.e. karma's coming, if you like. But to the rest of you in Thyatira, do not hold this teaching, who have not learned that some call the deep things of Satan. To you, I say, I do not lay on you any other burden, only hold fast to what you have until I come. So be pure in your heart, hold, there's, there's spirit in there already that's doing good works. To everyone who conquers and continues to my works to the end, I will give you authority over the nations to rule them with an iron rod. That is repeated again. You'll hear that repeated again and again. I will give you control of the body and the mind. Total control. I.e. there will be no more Satan, no more devil, no more ego, no more tempting, no more deceit. As when clay pots are shattered, and that's alluding to in the Bible when they, God talks about shattering the pots till there's nothing left of them, till they're tiny, 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 tiny shreds that can't right. even be seen. These are calls to arms, not just information. And just a word on, again on the four living creatures. The heart, the, four, the fourth living creature is the eagle. Now an eagle flies, it's free, it soars, but it also hunts. It should also be on guard to, um, for, you know, deceit, tempting for predators. Um, we talked about it's a bridge or a gateway as we'll see later and its earthly element is air. So air, what? Invisible, life-giving, life-nourishing, comes in and out but it's created by God, it was supplied by God, it's the manna from heaven. And it's the area of self-gratification and that can lead to a wrong focus, the pleasure pain cycle, guilt, imprisonment, worshipping of false idols, money for example, when money is king, you can't live without money, you will need money, money is power, money is control, all of this rubbish that we tell ourselves. So really, the message to Thyatira is the spirit self to endure and know that you will be saved for the greater glory to come, to attain the original illumination of the morning star that you were.